Hello boys and girls, welcome to Benchart, I'm for Classic and for today what I do have in it is Shared Over Lights, a game developed by the Farm 51 and it is using Android Engine 4. They provided me the key for the game for free, so thank you a lot for that, I was able to test the game thanks to that. And here we are, with the game running on the GT 940MX 2GB GTDR5 or the NVIDIA MX 130 2GB GTDR5. And my recommended settings for this game is... Drum rolls. 720p, low settings, low preset, I mean, I disabled motion boarding chromatic aberration because nobody likes it. And my recommendation is for you, for you to use uh, resolution scaling in between to 85 to 100 percent, depends on what frame rate that you want, or using IMD FSR ultra quality. So despite my recommendations, I didn't gather the performance uh, using those recommendations because my this is the result that I got during the benchmark tool. So if you go with the low preset, which uses 70 percent of resolution scaling at low settings, the frame rate average it is above 60, but it can drop as low as for so super playable and if you go with median settings with 85% of resolution scaling you can expect your frame rate to be above 30 but it can drop as low as 25 so looking to the requirements these guys specify that you need at least 8 gigabytes of RAM or a GTX 660 or a GTX 1050 or a GTX 770M uh, if you have an NVIDIA to play the game at low settings 30 frames per second. They don't really specify which resolution, but I'm assuming that it is 1080p. So, using my recommended settings, I'm using now at the moment um, 720p, low settings, 95% of resolution scaling with no motion board and chromatic aberration. And the experience that I had, it was pretty much above 30, with some areas dropping down below the 30 to 25, 26, 27. Keep in mind that these moments are very demanding comparing to many of the maps of the game. There is one specific map inside the game that it is as demanding as this level, but most of the other maps are just silky smooth at 40 to 50 frames per second. Well, I'm a little bit lying because the game doesn't run entirely silky smooth. That's the issue. The game, despite have good frame rates, unfortunately it suffers massively from big amounts of stuttering. So if you look to my frame time graph, everything that seems most of the time to be having uh, an earthquake attack or something going on, this I believe it is related with VRAM. Because despite the GPUs recommended on the requirements of the game, you have two gigabytes of VRAM, and despite yes, you can game you can run the game this way, well, full of stuttering, but you can. Uh, the thing is, the VRAM it is entirely full with two gigabytes of VRAM. You can try to drop the texture quality to low if you want, since the low preset uses the median textures. But the low textures looks really, really bad in my opinion, unfortunately. So yeah, there's that. So yeah, two gigabytes of VRAM, it it just isn't. It just doesn't feel enough to provide a single smooth experience. And also it makes the game to use over 8GB of RAM. So if you have 8GB of RAM and your GPU have 2GB of VRAM, you can expect to have some sort of a very stuttery experience. Now, if you have the 4GB version of the GT940MX or the MX130 and that 4GB version it is GTDR5, I'm going to assume, and also if you have 16 gigs of RAM, I'm going to assume that most of the stuttering that I'm having in here will be eliminated. You will have occasional stutters when traversing the world, but those things are the usual stuff for Unreal Engine 4 games and low-end CPUs. All right. So regarding performance, this is what you can expect. All right. So what about IMD FSR versus resolution scaling? Well, my personal for preference for this game. It is to use resolution scaling. I just set it 95% because I think it's a good balance, but you can go with 90% or 85. It is absolutely fine. I prefer resolution scaling over IMD FSR with ultra quality because FSR on this game applies a very, very strong sharpening filter and at low resolutions and doesn't seem like it's very normal. And it makes even the aliasing sometimes more noticeable than it should be. But the performance improvements of using IMD FSR, it is really great since uh, I wasn't really able to see frame rates going under 30 frames per second unless it was due to stuttering. 
All right, so this is a performance that you can expect on Chernobyl bikes on the GT 940MX or the MX 130. Just remember that VRAM and RAM, it is very important for this game when it comes to stuntering, all right? So now let's talk a little bit about Chernobyl bikes because I think that most of the people are expecting this game to be stalker and unfortunately that's not really the case, all right? So I will explain exactly what is Chernobyl bikes. So let's go. So it is quite cliche, so basically you are a physicist called Igor and you lost your wife Tatiana during the explosion of the reactor uh, of Chernobyl. Years later the zone now is crawled with uh, agents and bandits uh, just like the stalker, you can call them stalkers if you want, alright, it's full of them and you think that your wife uh, it is on the power plant and you want to go there but obviously you just can't go inside a power plant since it's uh, fully defended and you just can't take there with you many other guys to help you based on things that you hear in your head so basically uh, during the the gameplay of this game you need to find proofs that she's really there in order to convince people to go there and rescue her all right well that's the story although yeah this is one of the guys that will help you it is the all live here and that's it you will find other teammates during the playthrough and each one have their own set of skills and you can evolve them not uh, skyrim style where you pay uh, gold for it no that's not like it you need to train them and you need to feed them and you need to have the best conditions as possible to them in order for them to evolve so this is where the game starts to be kind of different from when you start to notice that the game it is no stalker because you get to this warehouse which will be your hub for everything and you need to build it fallout 4 style so every time you go to the zone you collect uh, um, I was about to say ingredients, but no, the, you're going to collect equipments and stuff and uh, scop stuff that uh, allows you to build stuff into the warehouse to improve, for example, air filters, to have TVs, uh, to have stuff so that your teammates are fine with the app that they have and they feel more comfortable and glad to help you out in your journey. Well, that's pretty much about it. So basically, what is Chernobylite? Chernobylite it is a story driven game. Not entirely driven though, but uh, I think the story it is the best thing about this game, despite it is super cliche. The way that it unfolds, it is special, and I will talk about that later. But above all, this game, you will manage your team because you need to feed them, you need to, them to have the best conditions as possible. You need to manage your warehouse and every day you need to go to the zone to collect ingredients or with a specific objective. So basically the gameplay loop it is exactly like this. You are in your warehouse with two teammates for example and that is it is a start of a new day and you can select for example five to six areas of the zone where you want to start. Each area it is a little bit like a small chunk of stalker map and um, when you start the day each uh, chunk of the map have its own objectives and you can say for example Olivier you go to this zone and uh, do this objective uh, other guy go to the other zone and do such objective and you you can select the area of the zone and do specific object objective because uh, it might be food it might be materials it might be ammo it might be anything so you do that specific objective that is always uh, secondary stuff for you to do too and you finish what you are going to do there, you finish your main objective and you open a portal and you get back to the main hub, I mean the, the warehouse. So you feed your colleagues, your colleagues give you uh, what they collect with the mission, you get what you collect with the mission, you evolve your comrades, you evolve your warehouse and you go to bed, you start a new day and the objectives change as well as the places of the zone. But basically, it is exactly like that. You start on the warehouse, you select where you want to go, you, the game loads that area, which is usually a chunk of the map, you complete that objective, you go back to the warehouse, you evolve with the things that you collect, go back to sleep, rinse and repeat. So the game gets really repetitive because uh, the objectives, 
they are not very di diverse, you know. And this is one of the biggest flaws that I have with this game is that it really gets repetitive. The enemies are very easy to kill. I played with the medium difficulty, probably with the maximum difficulty. It does change, but it is super easy. The enemies, this part, they are uh, very well armed. Uh, they are a little bit dumb, and they don't eat as they don't have too much accuracy, as well as they have laser sight, so you can quickly see where they are pointing at. Makes the things even more easier. You know, the monsters are really very generic. There is some jump scares here and there, and every time you go to the zone. You can find traders, you can find evidences that Tatiana is at specific place or something. Some evidence that will help you out with the objective. And it is just... The game it is just about that. Now, talking about the story, I say that the story is special. Because this game... And this is the selling point, in my opinion, for this game. Alright? This game have tons of very important decisions. And these is decisions that will affect you throughout the game as well as the ending. It's not like Life is Strange where you get to the, to the, to the end of the game. You have two different choices depending... Uh, I mean, you have the two different choices to choose from. And whatever you've done in the past, it doesn't affect the ending. No, Chernobyl Lights, all the decisions you take they will have consequences and they don't even display a warning there saying that your decision will have consequences in the future no sometimes you are making a decision a very important one without even you knowing that and this is awesome all right and giving the supernatural thing and the paranormal activity that is going this just like stalker the Chernobylites, which is a compound, the green compound that you pick up, that enables you to create portals and go back in time, allows you sometimes to go back in time and change um, some answers and some decisions that you took, that you, at some point you thought that they were the best for you and for the world, and then after a while you discover that, ah shit, probably it wasn't that... Probably I should take another decision. You can go back in time at some point, pay up with Chernobylites, go back in time and change the story. And it is really well done and I think the Farm 51 really nailed it. So when it comes to managing your own team, managing your warehouse and the way that the story unfolds and changes based on your decisions and the decisions are really important, it really changes a lot. This is really the selling points of the game. When it comes to gameplay, and uh, gameplay, I mean exploring and stuff like that, I think these are the weakest parts, alright? So, this game, it is complete the opposite of Stalker, alright? This game nails the story that uh, it brings, despite it is super cliche at the beginning, uh, it really starts to unfold in a very decent one. Uh, the story, the decisions, the managing that you have in here, this is what makes this game great. Not the gameplay, not the exploring and the RPG stuff. The RPG stuff, it is really, eh, it's generic. Everything, it is super generic. But when it comes to the rest, I think this game really nails it. So if you were hoping this game to be a stalker or a metro exodus or any kind of that stuff, you will be super disappointed. Because this is not where the game it is good at. It, I think at, at some point the Farm 51 might want to do kind of a stalker or a Metro Exodus. But they thought that they didn't add the resources and they thought that it wasn't really interested or it was just one more game like that. And they decided to create this, which is, despite it is not, you know, it is it doesn't nail all the things in the world inside the game, but it nails many stuff in this game. There is some interesting concepts in here. Most of them are not really new, but apply it to the zone and the way that it is done, it is really great. Alright, so it's not a perfect game by any means. I was expecting better gameplay. Uh, I was expecting the game to be much less repetitive. I would love these guys to release updates and uh, to add more diversity to the objectives that you do daily so that the game couldn't be as much repetitive. Uh, if they do that, it would be awesome. But uh, if they could solve that, if they could solve the artificial intelligence and every kind of that stuff, I'm assuming that the median difficulty, they are decent. Uh, I'm expecting that if I 
get the difficulty higher probably it is more complicated to play or probably it is more challenging i don't know i really hope so but for now i wasn't really impressed with the median difficulty now that i'm seeing this let me add since you are a physicist you are not kind of a soldier or a super stalker that you kill everyone every time you kill like uh, a guy or something uh, your mental state can drop a little bit so the lower it gets uh, they say that you can see visions and stuff like that your screen starts to go black all around uh, because you are going to get crazy a little bit uh, also your colleagues you need to manage that too for them because they can also get uh, sanity levels very reduced and so you need to take care of that because if you send them to missions where they will kill um, eventually their sanity levels will decrease too so that's something that you need to manage to to your teammates all right so i think that's all that i want to talk about chernobylites hope you keep enjoying the rest of the gameplay and i do hope to see you soon goodbye Колок, прозвище агента КГБ. Наверное, уже не удастся узнать, кто это был. <звы> 